the little triangle, put your hook right inside there for your double crochet, for your little foundation to make your puff. Double crochet in that little hole. And now move back one and place your puff stitch there. So yarn over, we're going into the one behind it. Pull up, in, pull up, in, pull up. Remember to stay loose, right? That third one, really give it a little tug. Pull through all seven and chain one. And you're gonna start to see this gorgeous little braid with, I love the little holes in between it. Um, you can do this, um, this stitch for other things and not have the holes there's a way to to do that but for the wall hanging i really liked um just having the the whole the the empty spaces there because it kind of gives it even more texture and um just more appeal hanging on your wall all right we're going to double crochet in our chain one from the row before yarn over create that puff stitch Again, you're only gonna have not you're gonna have nine each row. You're never gonna change that. Never gonna change the number of puffs. It's so mindless once you get going. <laughs> All right, double crochet. Two, three, pull through, chain one, and see I'm starting to get a little tight, so I gotta keep your tail loose, keep Keep your hands loose, keep your shoulders loose, everything on this one, because you want to be able to tug it at the end of each row, tug it and really stretch out that tubular knit. And you can, um, like I said, this puff stitch is based on multiples of three plus three at the end, just for your little turning chain. So if you want to make a huge wall hanging, if you can score some of that Bernat Maker, you know, even just a couple of skeins of that, maybe two, you could make a gigantic, gorgeous wall hanging with this um, puff stitch. You can also make them smaller if you have just a little bitty area of the wall or something like that that you need to fill with. Um, the cream sized one that I made is a bit smaller, maybe an inch or two smaller than this. Um, and like I said, you can you can create that with just one skein of this red heart strata um, or less than half of the the Burnett maker home deck all right we are almost there what did i do there there we go pull through pull through last one see our last puff here so same thing, go in. Create your puff stitch. So you just get used to pulling up after a while. It'll get where it's just easy for you. Pull through, chain one, and then place your half double in the top of that, that chain. Essentially, it doesn't really matter where you put it because it's a wall hanging, y'all. <laughs> I like to put it in, do you see this one right here beside the puff stitch? That's where I like to put mine, but honestly, just get it into one of those. It's the easiest one, I think, and it, it really, it gives you a little more stretch. If I guess technically that's the chain, the top of the chain too, but it, I like to put it right beside that puff because it will even out once you get your rectangle going and you kind of stretch it out, it will even it out. And then you're also gonna place a single crochet border around the wall hanging. So, congratulations. You know what your pattern repeat is. Isn't that so cute? See the braid? So from here on, just keep going. Chain two and then go back and forth, back, forth, back, forth. Half double at the ends. Um, I did wanna show you when you get to the end of it you finished um we have nine puffs across and if you look if you count this way one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen high so i pretty much just doubled it um once you get to however tall you want it but you know 18 if you're following the pattern and you're at that edge, literally just single crochet around. Um, it's not 
an exact science as to where I place my single crochets. I just did it to where you don't want your wall hanging to pull. So evenly spaced. Um, I'm doing approximately, what is that? Three per every two rows. See how the two, I mean, there's a round three there. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, yeah. So for every two rows of puff, there's around three um, single crochets. But once you go all the way around, it gives you this gorgeous finished edge. Um, I really like to kind of give it a stretch, give it a stretch. It's, it's really fun to stretch this stuff, y'all. This yarn is like magical. Give it a stretch, get it to lay really flat. Um, for your stick, it's been raining, like I said, six days here, y'all. <laughs> Forever. Forever. Um, I grabbed my daughter's walking stick out of her closet. My dad made this for her. She's now almost 10. Next month, she'll be 10. My dad made this for her when she was like, I don't know, 18 months, two years old. Isn't that adorable? She has kept up with it. We've lived in seven states in her lifetime, and she keeps this in her closet everywhere we move. It's super cute. So anyway, I just grabbed this to demonstrate, but find you a stick that's either approximately as long as your wall hanging, or it can be super long. It can be a big fat stick, whatever you want. When you get to the end of your single crochet border, I cut a pretty decent amount of yarn. Um, just, there's no science to it. Just a lot of yarn essentially, um, or whatever you have left. And I'll take a yarn needle thread it through your hook. And then I literally will just sew around the stick. Like go in to your single crochet with your needle, come around your stick, go in, come around, go in, come around. And I just sew it to the stick. Um, another way you can do it is you can crochet around it. So if you, you know, to me it's a little bit awkward, but also this stick is huge. <laughs> But you can loop your yarn around and crochet down like that. It's totally up to you. You can also just finish it off here. Just finish off and then you can literally just have it hang by the yarn. Um, the stick just kind of makes it look really cute, really rustic and boho and then it also gives it some support and keeps it flat there. And then lastly, we just got our fringe going on. So this is where I started the wall hanging. I'm so sorry about bumping the camera, y'all. My dog is right underneath me and he's a gigantic water buffalo. Um, I cut um, several, I didn't, I didn't super fringe this one because I want it to have like a really kind of minimalist look. Um, you can cut any fringe any length you want. If you want it really long, if you want it short, this is probably, I don't know, probably I'd say about 14 inches long. And all you're gonna do, grab your crochet needle. I like to start at the edge here. And you're gonna go in, and there really is no wrong side of this either. Both sides are exactly the same. So go in to your opposite side. Remember my stick is up at the top, so here's the bottom. Just pull. So I've doubled over my yarn cutting for my fringe. Pull it through and just make a little slip knot or a little knot. There you go. That's it. And that might be even too long for you for yours. Um, I just cut a bunch of friends right before this to show you. You can you can make it as sparse or as um, fringy as you want. You can put a ton of fringe in each one. I usually just kind of go down and just do um, one cutting of yarn per each single crochet and just go down just like that and put it all the way across and voila you are ready to go on your cute Elysian wall hanging. Again the free pattern is up on my blog at www.addisonjamesknits.com and please please um, come follow me over on Instagram. I'd love to say hey to you and I love to share my friends work whenever you, um, if you'll tag me with either Addison James Knits or the hashtag AJK Elysian Crochet Wall Hanging, I'd love to share that in my stories um, because there's just so many amazing 
makers out there. So thanks again. Hope y'all enjoyed everything.